Hey yo guys, what's good, what's happening, what's going on? It's another beauty day in the bay and the cold snap has finally finished. It's so friggin' awesome. Like, would you just look at it out there? It's gorge -ous. Now you're probably saying to yourself, hey Adam, why the frig are you wearing a muscle shirt? Like, what the hell's really going on? Well, today guys, I'm gonna do a weird video. Today, what we're gonna do is we're going to do a workout. I haven't done a video like this since, what, 2019 or something like that? Because I'm gonna try some methods that an individual that I watch on YouTube talked about now it's going to give you guys a little bit of a status update that and i want to have a pre-workout shake before we do this um i cleared the sink and i didn't have to gut the down there but i did have to use my hair blower basically it's going to be hard to show this because i don't have good lighting i just propped up the hair blower on the pipe back there and just forced air down and it was enough to break the ice and that worked out great for me so I literally let it run there for like 10 minutes and then glug, 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 glug. Everything went down. Anyway, what I need to do now is make myself a, a, a pre-workout shake that I make from custom. I don't buy pre-workout stuff like those shakes because they're just loaded with caffeine. And if I wanted caffeine, I could just throw some instant coffee into the thing and blend it up and have a good day. So what we're going to need is we're going to need our ninja shaker cup and you've probably seen me make this exact shake yesterday i like it it gives me good energy and and it's uh not caffeine what we're gonna do is we're gonna add two scoops of whey i got this revolution stuff i really like it it tastes good it's um i tell you what the calories are but the air fryer took a shit on the bottle so that's pretty much unreadable now but whatever. So I'll grab two scoops away. And then something else that I like to do is throw some creatine in there, but not just any kind of creatine. Well, I'm gonna put creatine with this creatine. And you gotta make sure you drink a lot of water when you, you're using creatine. But I like to use this creatine X3, which, you know, it's not the greatest because it does have four grams of sugar and it has 19 grams of carbs, but I'm gonna be lifting. So this is gonna come out clutch. Uh, it also has muscle building complex with the creatine monohydrate and phosphate. And it also has a bunch of amino acids as well as branch chain amino acids. So might as well, even though whey protein usually has that shit in it anyway, a little bit more never hurts. So I'm gonna throw a scoop of that into my shake. And then for some real fun stuff, this is stuff they don't tell you about in uh, primary school. We're gonna throw some maca powder into it. And then we're also gonna throw some ashwagandha root into it. This stuff here, look up ashwagandha root. Here, here's the name. Look that up on Google, just for fun. Look it up and check out the health benefits, the science studies on this stuff. And this stuff here was cheap. Like how much did I pay for this? This was eight bucks. Mind you, it literally smells like a friggin' barn. So if you have a problem with the taste and or smell, you can also purchase this here in pill form and do it that way there. So I usually put one scoop of that and one scoop of the, the maca into my cup. And then just for some extra fun and thickness, cause everybody likes it thick. We're gonna add some blueberries to this. Why blueberries? Amazing source of energy, low in carbs, awesome antioxidant. Throw in some water to top it up. Some people use uh, that silk stuff, soy milk. Some people will actually use milk. I prefer not to because I don't wanna be shitting myself the whole time during my workout. So water, good enough, good stuff. And then just send it to the blender. Now, once you're all said and done, it looks like you put Barney the purple dinosaur through his death sentence. But let me tell you, this stuff tastes delicious you can't even taste the ashwagandha root which is a blessing all right down the hatch people oh, that's thick gown see one of the things i like about ashwagandha root is it promotes healing and that's great if you have a slow healing rate ashwagandha root will fix that for you another thing i like about ashwagandha root is it's a mood enhancer. So if you're like a grumpy Gary every friggin' day of the light of your life, like me circa 2016, take ashwagandha root and you'll always look on the bright side of life. And it works even in pill form because I got the pills upstairs. Uh, let me show you those right now. My mouth face, my mouth face, my mouth, my mouth, my mouth face, my mouth face. Boop. Alrighty, guys, welcome to Skivens Drugstore. We got everything you need and everything you want in a drugstore. So this is the ashwagandha root, but it's expensive. It's 20 bucks for the bottle, but it's 400 milligrams per serving. And honestly, I take one of those in the morning and I feel great. Now, if you're fasting, 
You stack that with a digestive aid, holy piss. The effects are crazy. Like, you wanna know why I lost 22 pounds in, uh, in seven days? Normally when I fast, it's a pound, maybe a pound and a half tops. Two pounds a day is if I'm like putting in 10,000 steps and actually burning 4,000 calories a day. I was burning tops 2,900 to 3,100 calories a day and I burnt two pounds, of, uh, two pounds a day. It's because of that shit and the digestive enzymes. Works like a charm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this stuff sit and digest for a bit because I don't wanna have a colon blow mid friggin' bench press. I got a video to edit. I'm gonna finish doing that and then I'll see you guys in the arena. When I come in the arena. All right guys, welcome to the arena. Uh, basically this whole workout idea, the high volume, moderate weight is inspired by Ryan Humiston on YouTube. Came across this guy, mentioned him in yesterday's vlog. I'll link him again down below if you wanna check him out. He's probably one of my favorite fitness influencers on YouTube today because he's descriptive, he tells you how it is, he doesn't cut to bullshit, and he's not a sellout, and he's got some funny one-liners. Now, what I mean is there's a lot of YouTube fitness influencers out there who will just sell out non-stop. Like, they're just trying to get you to buy every product on Amazon, or they're pushing products to shave your balls and all that. I don't have time for that. All I want to do is learn how to do a movement that's effective, how to do it right, and then implement it and see how it goes. So this workout of his, uh, I don't have the workout plan. All I have have from him is literally his methods as don't do 10 reps don't do 20 reps just do as many as you possibly can with a moderate around of weight between 30 percent and 80 percent of your one rep max he says he likes to keep it around the 60 percent mark and that way there you can go through the reps and you can get as much blood into the area as possible to get yourself a sick pump the reason why you want a sick pump is where there's blood there's nutrition where there's nutrition there's material for repair where repair happens, there's growth. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna set up the bow flex for bench press and we're gonna get pressing. Let's go. So guys, just so you know, this is four sets of straight to failure. I don't know if I have enough weight on there or not, but let's get after it. Wow, okay, okay one time. That's uh, definitely different. Take it right to failure. We'll take a little bit of a 45 second break, jump back in there. And like I say, really drive the blood to the pecs. Just really get her in there. He said this workout's painful. Like doing it like this, it's painful. But he also guarantees growth. And the guy's pretty friggin' big, so I'm gonna say he knows what he's talking about. But that's usually what you do when you see people who succeed in things. All right, back at her. shit oh i can only do like 15 that time okay maybe a bit more of a rest i can definitely feel it in my pecs oh holy shit okay well seeing i got a lot of freaking blood in my titties i think what we're gonna do next is some butterflies i don't know how the hell that's gonna go because this shoulder kind of acts up when i do that but i figure let's just destroy the pecs as much as possible tonight and then tomorrow i can just live off advil and crying It's been a hot minute since I've done curl or butterflies. Oh, holy for frig sakes. All right guys, so to train the delts, a lot of fitness influencers will say, don't bother touching the front because you've already worked it, but I like to do front raises. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our 15 pound dumbbells and front raise. See how we're gassed. Now we'll grab our 10 pound dumbbells and keep on going. Oh, we're gonna take a rest. 
for a bit because I really I have an intro workout shit be right back I can tell you one thing for certain if an appliance could be scarred out of its life that toilet in there is not having a good day we just got done our front raises so what I was doing was I was grabbing the 15 pounds front raise to failure grabbing the 10 pounds front raise to failure if I had five pounds I would have switched to that and just completely annihilated them but I don't so it is what it is now we got to do side raises so for that I think I'm going to start off with the 15s and then we're going to switch to the 10s and we're going to go through the exact same format I destroyed my friggin front delt so bad I can't even do barely any with those I might just have to go right to the 10s and go right to failure my uh, side delts are feeling kind of burnt out right now. So let's grab the tens. Oh God, I can't even barely do any with that. My friggin' shoulders are killing me. All right, just gonna take a rest and then bang out another set with just the tens. And then next on the chopping block, tricep push downs. Oh. I think this is going to be my new workout routine. Bro split, every set to failure, slowly making gains in the, in the weight category. And that's the thing, guys. I know a lot of my friends, I'm like, they're like, oh man, you should come to the gym with me. And I'm just like, no, I don't like working out in the gym. I'd rather work out at home. I got all the gear I need there. And they're like, oh, they're like, yeah, you're right. I probably wouldn't go to the gym anyway. And I'm like, why not? And they're like, because I haven't done much and I don't want to see people watching me lift 10 pounds. Thing is, is you got to start somewhere, you know? If you can't do a push-up or 10 push-ups, do one, do two, take a rest, do two more, take a rest, do two more, take a rest, do two more, take a rest. Then all of a sudden you've done 10. You didn't do them consecutively, but you did 10. The next day you're going to go and do push-ups, you'll be able to do three. You'll be like, oh. And then the next day you will go do push-ups, you'll do five and then eight, and then 10. Next thing you know, you'll be doing 25 back to back and you'll start noticing a lot of change. You gotta start somewhere and you can't let people talk you down because the only people who talk you down are people who wish they could do what you're doing. Remember that. All right, guys, <clears throat> it's time for tricep pull downs. So what I normally do is I put my arms right at my side and just push. I only want the triceps to activate. See, some people start up here and they do this and you can see my arms moving and I'm actually recruiting some lats to friggin' do the motion. If you bring your arms here, tuck them in, and then do the, the action, it's all tricep. Let's just burn it right out. If you're doing it right, let me tell you, you can really feel your triceps. The backs of your arms are on fire. Everything else is fine, but the back of those arms just wants to punch you in the face so friggin' hard. Woo! Oh, tomorrow's gonna suck. All right, guys, on that note, I am done. We were at it for, looks like an hour and 20 minutes. Of course, some of that was me sitting on the toilet and dying, but nevertheless, and I have my dinner in the instant pot right now cooking. I made a heavy green stew. Basically, I had some, uh, had one of those steaks left that Nikki brought up, one of those big massive jumbo guys. Well, I chopped it in half and threw it in that thing, but I chopped it up into cubes. I'm literally making a stew. I also added some greens to it. We got some cabbage. We got some celery, we got some bok choy. I also threw some fish sauce in there cause I don't think it had sugar in it, can't remember. I'm pretty sure that's why I liked it. It's because it was sugar free. What do you say you contain? 10 calories, one gram of carbs, one gram of protein, and that one gram of carbs is fiber, so sweet. And my supper is now ready. I'm just gonna let it sit there on, stay warm and I need to have a shower because I'm a freaking sweaty mess and I smell like a wildebeest got into a fight with a skunk and then made love to it. So I'll talk to you guys after my shower. Peace out. Well, I'm going to be a cripple tomorrow. Holy crap. It's like I'm in the shower and I'm trying to wash my hair and I had a freaking tricep pump and I'm doing one of these because I couldn't get my arms up. Shoulders are fried as frig. Oh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be my neighbor? All right, I need my bowl. And we need to pour this single serving of stew into it. 
Pitter patter. Alrighty guys. Oh, that looks fantastic and smells even better. Do I have a spoon? I have the spoon. Spoon! Let me get this out of the pot and into my bowl. Oh, that looks awesome. This is going to be a good post-workout friggin' meal for sure. Cooked in bone broth with uh, bok choy, celery, and cabbage. Hell yeah. And I'm going to grab that bone broth out of there and pour it into the bowl. So I have some juices. I'm sure that container's hot, so I don't feel like burning myself right now. Not necessarily, so that's going to be friggin' awesome. Love my Instant Pot. Like seriously, that looks amazing. So I'm going to go drive this in my face hole, and I'll talk to you guys when I'm done. All right, guys, it's almost friggin' 11.30 at night. I actually uh, just got I just got fun with Nikki. We're chatting about stuff and things. And, and then uh, but before that, I had to go to Walmart to pick up some supplies that I forgot to pick up. Uh, one of them being hand soap, because I thought I had some in the closet, in the, the bathroom pantry closet linen thing. And I super didn't, so I didn't have any hand soap. That sucked. And another thing that I had, didn't have that I wanted was mustard. And now I has it. That's, what else did I buy tonight? Oh yeah, I decided to uh, say screw it. This piss was on sale. So I got some pre-workout ex pre explosion. Ooh, and it's by Six Star. It's probably got more sugar than anything, but it's got a, they had to use a really fine print to put all the uh, ingredients on it because they put a lot of junk in there. So I'm going to try that out tomorrow for tomorrow's workout. Now, guys, you probably saw the workout today. You're thinking that's all you do is just those three things. What about your biceps? What about your back? What about your legs? That's in tomorrow's part of the bro split. Today was push. So, well, I guess theoretically I should have done squats too. But today was mainly um, bench press or mainly chest, shoulders, and your uh, triceps. And tomorrow is back, biceps, legs, and then core. I just train that throughout the day by doing sit-ups and stuff. So that's pretty much an everyday occurrence because I read somewhere you can train core every day because your core regenerates super fast or some nonsense. I don't know, whatever. But anyway, so on my way to Walmart, right? I drive by that gas station all the time, the one on the corner. And I'm horrified by what I saw. Gas in North Bay is a dollar seventy-two a liter. Dollar seventy freaking two a liter. So for a gallon of gas, if we're buying it in the gallon up here, well, let's just see. What's a dollar seventy-two times three point seven eight? Sorry, I don't have any information about that. You mean she can tell me the weather, but she can't even friggin' do basic math? Well, I can't even do basic math, so I guess we're on the same level. Okay, I need a calculator and I don't carry my phone around with me ever. I'm bad for that. I also lose the damn thing all the time, so I gotta keep asking her where the hell it is and then she makes it ring loud and then I find it. So let's uh, get in front of the computer here because because this thing's got a calculator built into it. You can play Grand Theft Hor Horsey, edit videos, and tell me the price of gas. Let's get the old calculator app going. So times 3.78. So... Jesus Murphy. If we were paying by the gallon, we would be paying $6.50 a gallon Canadian. The Canadian dollar is worth, I don't even know what the value of the Canadian dollar is right now to the US dollar. 79 cents American is $1 Canadian. So $1.21 Canadian times 0.79. Conversion to American, $5.13 a gallon. So I know a lot of people were complaining about the price of gas and I laughed on Facebook when I saw some one of my friends chime in and said, if it wasn't for that stupid trucker rally in Ottawa, the price of gas wouldn't be so high. None of the truckers that striked or not striked, but went on protest in Ottawa were truckers who carry fuel. You want to know how I know that? Because the main carrier of fuel in Ontario is Tud Hope. Tud Hope is unionized and they've all been vaccinated from the get go. They're following the mandates. They got a really good friggin' high paying job hauling that gas around. So that's a big false. The trucker rally, nothing to do with the price of gas. So whoever's putting that friggin' story out there, if it's a friggin' media outlet, somebody seriously needs to shut that media outlet down because they're spreading false facts. This inflation on gas, this is something else. Some people say it's the Trudeau's carbon tax, but why is it also affecting the states? Like, do you guys have a carbon tax down there now too? Did Mr. Biden go ahead and friggin' add a, uh, a carbon tax to the, U the US? 
kind of a pointless tax too. I never seen Mother Nature take a friggin' dime from me. Last time I checked, if I wanted trees to grow, I had to get off my ass, go out and plant them. I, I don't, I don't understand why. Like, you remember last time I went and filled up my truck, the video running errands or whatever? No, what was I doing? I think it was the the, the night I went out and I bought that 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 friggin' tiller and I went to Canadian Tire and I pumped a bunch of gas in the tank put 75 bucks in barely got a half a tank well that night there it was a buck 56 and it spiked to a dollar 66.3 while I was pumping like I literally got there pulled the lever off you know pressed the button and started pumping gas and then pumped it to 75 and then went and paid at a dollar 56 and it went up a dime that was three uh, two weeks ago because it was around today when i went and did that because it was when nikki was coming up and i was like i better have some gas in the tank because we're probably going to be doing some driving around like when i'm on my own i don't drive anywhere except when i go ice fishing on the weekends yeah dollar 72 a freaking liter holy shit and they're saying it's not stopping there like really really freaking premier ford wants to bring things back to normal he's uh releasing a lot of the mandates he said by march 1st it's everything's going to be wide open no more vaccine passports to eat in a restaurant no more seating restrictions in the freaking movie theaters everything's going back to normal i don't know what kind of a test they're doing but it should be interesting luckily i don't like to socialize so i could give two shits about going to the movies and eating at a restaurant is just eating at a restaurant who cares you know when nikki comes up we like to go to sills we usually go between lunch and supper so that we don't have to wait in a huge lineup we can just get in there and eat and let the mad rush happen without us everybody's gonna have to start commuting back to work and they're not gonna be able to afford to put money in their tanks it's ridiculous like is this the federal government's way to try and promote people to buy electric cars well you're gonna need to create some serious incentives because uh, those electric cars aren't exactly cheap yet. A, a brand new Tesla runs you what, like 40 grand? And that's the base model? And if you want the pickup truck from Ford, it's like 112 grand Canadian? Like, it's, it's not financially a feasible solution. And the battery technology is not there yet. I, my friend has a Tesla up here in the north, and he's like, oh yeah, in the summer I can get about 400, I can get about four, 500 kilometers before I have to charge it. I'm like, how's it in the winter? And he's like, oh, I can get about 150, 200 kilometers kilometers like wow that's way over half your mileage when it's cold and he's like yeah and on those days that we had minus 35 he's like the car didn't want to move and he's like and it's such a stupid feature on the tesla the handles sink into the door he couldn't even get into his damn car some days great feature tesla pull your head out of your ass but anyway guys tomorrow like i said i got another workout to do i'm not going to film that one i'm just going to do it because i like listening to music when i work out not having music kind of gets me out of the zone anybody who lifts you know what i'm talking about you either have your airpods in your head or big earmuffs on when you're in the gym and you're lifting because you need that musical stimulation you need whatever edge you can get so that you can move that weight i'm the same way so today when it was all quiet and i'm lifting i'm like wow this is kind of stupid i'm not having fun that's the other reason why I don't do like like Juju Mufu and them and the, all their videos where they do like weightlifting vlogs, which is a thing by the way. Weightlifting vlogs, totally a thing. Go check out Juju Mufu on friggin' YouTube. Does them all the time. They're kind of funny, but no, uh, that's the reason why I did it. I did it. I did this kind of a video twice. In the beginning, when I was lifting. I was in better shape then too. I wasn't so fat. And today showing the the idea of lifting to failure, not counting your reps, and just going till you can't and then try and push through some more. And I can already tell tomorrow, it's seriously gonna be an Advil and chill day. You know what I mean? So anyway, guys, on that note, I need to get to bed. 6.30 comes fast. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. If you have any ideas for things I should add to my workout, different moves, whatever, let me know. If you have a different bro split that you'd like to see me try and get my input on it, let me know what it is. If you wanna contact me with something more that will fit in the comments section, you can always reach me on my Facebook fan page. Link's also in the description. And sometimes I post pictures on Instagram. That link is also in the description. Check it out. Until next time, guys. Remember, live it to win it. And peace. The Freak. Out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.